The live video will start soon, it says. Okay, well. I'll wait until I'm confirmed that we are on. If you are just hanging out or waiting for me to do something or say something, I'll say just go ahead and get your guitar in tune. Uh, I'm tuned standard tuning. We're going to be working out of mostly the key of C on this event, but there's going to be lots of tidbits about guitar technique and things like that. Here we are. We are now live. Okay. There it is on the Facebook page. Let's see how we're doing on YouTube. Okay, I see a test. Well, it's labeled test, but it's me. Okay. Well, welcome everybody. I'll, I'll start over. friends, guitar players, fans, and supporters of the Anchorage Folk Festival. Welcome, I'm Tyler Grant. Nice to be here with you this evening doing a flat picking guitar workshop. And this is an all level, hands-on workshop. So if you're watching without a guitar in your hand, that's totally fine, welcome. If you got a guitar in your hand or you're running to get your guitar, uh, go ahead and do so and we'll get ready. So, it looks like we're live. Looks like uh, I've got my head cut off a little bit, so I'm going to adjust this for you. Okay, and i uh, tell you about the Anchorage Folk Festival. So, traditionally this event has happened in January, and due to COVID restrictions, has now been rescheduled for the 33rd annual Anchorage Folk Festival, May 14th, in Cuddy Park Outdoors. Rose's Pawn Shop and several other acts will be playing. So this uh, workshop here tonight is a bit of an experiment and uh, furthering the plan of the Anchorage Folk Festival to have year-round events, workshops, concerts, and that is the idea, that's the goal. Uh, tonight here we're doing this virtual event with you. So keep an eye out on anchoragefolkfestival.org it is a non-profit and sure could use your support. Okay, so I'm gonna just gonna double check the streams again. We're up on YouTube, we're up on Facebook. Okay. Um, I'm noticing. Okay, I, uh, all right. Um, no description there. I am Tyler Grant and uh, I'm gonna be working with you on flat picking guitar. So, we're going to begin with um, a little tune, and that's what we're going to be working toward, and that's what I just played for you, that little uh, tune called, called Little Annie, which is a song of springtime, and we are experiencing some serious springtime thaw down here in Colorado, and I'm sure... It's happening to you up in uh, up in Alaska as well. So I'm going to stand by because there's some information that is not on the description that I would like to add. Okay, and I'm giving you a chance to get your guitar, get in tune, get your pick, get comfortable. Okay, and we'll get started here in just a quick moment.
Okay, everyone ready? We're gonna get started now. But uh, part of the deal is that there's a virtual tip jar here, so I'm posting you my links. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm holding a standard six string guitar, steel strings, and I have a pick. It doesn't really matter what type of pick you're using, but we're gonna be covering techniques that apply to the flat picking style of guitar. So any type of pick that's flat, like so. I use a big old fat blue chip pick, but if you're holding a Fender Heavy or a Dunlop or any kind of pick, it doesn't really matter. The tones will be slightly different, but we'll get the job done either way, and everyone has their preference. So first of all, you'll see that I'm holding the guitar in this unique way. I use a strap to stabilize the headstock and be able to sit up straight and have the guitar up in a nice tight playing position. I cannot play with the guitar down like this. It just doesn't work for me. So that's why I do this. And if I'm standing, I'll, I'll typically loosen this a little bit. But this is my sitting position. And the idea is that my, the arm of my picking hand uh, is actually supporting the body of the guitar. And the strap is basically holding up the headstock. And that's why I don't use the strap button down there. So that's just me. Everyone has their own way of holding the instrument. But what I want you to start by doing is thinking about how are you holding the instrument? Can you access all the notes? Are you using this hand to stabilize the neck? This hand should be free. Things like that, okay? Um, now, we're going to do some basic exercises to get warmed up. And these are my calibration exercises that I do daily whenever I pick up the guitar. So start by holding the pick in a comfortable way. And for me, that just involves putting the flat part of my thumb over it, making sure I have a good sturdy grip and that it's not going to be slipping up this way or slipping down that way, okay? I'm holding it straight on so as if there's a point through the middle of it. So in other words, thumb not too far back that it's going to slip this way, thumb not too forward that it's going to slip that way. Make sure these are lined up really good. And I am propping up uh, I'm just resting sort of the, the crook of my elbow right there on the upper bout of the instrument, and that sets my picking hand in a good position right there. Okay? So, um, so we're going to start by just playing quarter notes and playing down strokes. So try playing the open G string. Do a few downstrokes there. Notice, I'm doing what I call a rest stroke, where I play that G string and then let the pick land on the B string. So, in other words, I'm resting on the next string. And this allows you to play with a certain amount of follow through, a straight down motion. It's like you're letting gravity do the work for you, and you're just landing right there on that next string. Now, um, we're going to play quarter notes. So we're going to start on the high E and we're going to do four downstrokes per string. So this will sound like one, two, three, four, and then the B string. All rest strokes. And the idea is we're trying to get a good loud tone. We're not trying to work for it. We're trying to do this effortlessly, but going for slow, steady downstrokes with a presence of sound. And if you're doing all these things properly and you're letting the weight of your hand fall through the string and you're doing a rest stroke, obviously on the high E, there's no string to rest on, so you just go straight down and uh, ever so slightly in. These rest strokes are actually pushing that vibration into the top and making a much stronger tone than if you were going out. Okay? So, here we go, steady quarter notes, stay right with me, and I'm gonna turn on a click track so that we can stay in time. And I've got that right here. I'm just gonna mute these videos. Uh, Wolfgang, if you wouldn't mind like throwing a description on these, I think you can still do that uh, editing on the back end. Okay, so um, here's my click track. I play with the metronome daily and I would encourage you to do the same. Now it's not just there to keep you in time, 
but it's there to give you something to play along with. It actually makes it more fun and keeps you organized when you're doing these exercises. So I'm going to set this at a nice slow tempo, about 60 beats per minute. Okay, I'm going to go even slower than that, let's say, because I want you all to really pay close attention to what you're playing and what these strings sound like as we play them. And we want to be dead on each beat, not ahead of it, not behind it. So here we go, starting on the high E string. One, two, ready, and go. Down, down, down. B string. That's okay. We are warming up. We're calibrating our picking hand. And to be more specific, I call it the picking mechanism. You got so many pieces involved in this. You got the thumb and the finger. You got the wrist. You got the elbow. And to me, the elbow just kind of moves the mechanism up from one area to another. And most of the work is being done by the wrist and the, and the finger and the thumb. Okay? And what I'm giving you here are tools for self-diagnosis. You can sit here and play this for a little while with the metronome and notice techniques, notice habits. Notice like, oh, my, my wrist is poking too far out. Let me correct that. Uh, oh, my tone on the high E string is a little bit shrill. Maybe I'll just adjust the pick angle a little bit. Um, there's lots of little musical things you can do with this very, very simple exercise. And also you're breathing and you're getting used to an effortless feeling. You're getting used to a totally relaxed feeling in that arm and in that hand and throughout this entire picking mechanism. And you're only using whatever effort it takes to play that note and then relaxing with every opportunity you get. So breathe deep while you're doing these exercises. So that was quarter notes. Now we're gonna do eighth notes but they're still gonna be downstrokes. So it's gonna be like this. One and two and three and four and one and two, okay? Still four beats per string, but we're playing eighth notes. You'll hit some clunkers, especially if you're trying to talk and do this at the same time. Okay, so eight downstrokes per string at an eighth note tempo. Here we go. Starting on the high E, breathing, still doing rest strokes. A one and two, and high E, ready, go. One, and two, and three. B, one, watch your fingers. G, listen to the sound, make adjustments. Play dead on with me. start to notice as you go through this is a nice loose warm feeling like you're you're warming up all these little micro muscles which are making these movements you're warming them up and you're doing so in a way that's going to reinforce good habits when you start to play and some of you might be saying this is going by way too slow I do this every day these are the ways I warm up and once you get it down you can get yourself calibrated as I like to call it uh, within a few minutes and then start and then start playing music 
Uh, at this time, I would suggest, you know, working on this until you feel calibrated and doing so every day and you could reduce the time it takes to get there with regular practice. Okay, so that was eighth notes. And if you have questions, go ahead and post them in the comments. I'm going to check uh, the Facebook page and the YouTube page here every now and then. Okay? Um, so, next, what do you think is next? Uh, it's going to be 16th notes, right? And this is going to involve the upstroke. So, at this point, I'll turn the click back on. So we did quarter notes, one, two, three, we did eighth notes, now sixteen notes, one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and up. So this is where the down up down up starts working and this is a very important part of flat picking. However, since we started with those strong kind of rest stroke style down strokes, we're used to that presence of sound and now when we shorten when we shorten that stroke, sorry, I've got to get in time here. One E and a two E and a three E and a four. We're still getting that nice big tone without doing rest strokes anymore. At this point, it's short, economical strokes. Just straight down, straight up, as short and economical as possible. In other words, you're not like doing rest strokes each direction. Short, economical. So this time it'll be Still four beats per string, but 16th note rhythm. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three Okay? So let's give that a go, starting on the high E string. Here we go. A one E and a two E and a ready and a go and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E B. One. Skip around at random. Again, you're working on your aim. Skip from one string to another. So by the time you get through all that, you're relatively calibrated, I would think. And if you're fixing habits or working on little improvements, that stuff can happen in time. Uh, but, but I would say do this for at least a few minutes every day when you pick up your guitar. Um, and, you know, a few kind of extra things. And I'll make a note here that I'm going to be moving through this stuff pretty quickly because you can come back and watch this video again. It will live on the YouTube channel and the Facebook page of the Anchorage Folk Festival. So if you need to come back and review something, you can come back and do that. Uh, but little things that I'll do once I'm on the 16th notes, I can start working on some cross picking patterns like that's a three note forward roll. So down, up, down, up, down. start that a lot slower if you're just learning that technique. And then four note. That's just a four note forward roll using four strings. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. So these are things that you can work toward uh, in your guitar playing and get into the cross picking technique, which I really enjoy. But it starts with just gaining that control of the pick. So start with these calibration exercises 
And hit me up if you want some cross-picking lessons. I can uh, point you to some good online resources that I have taught. Okay, um, so now let's move on to calibrating the fretting hand. So the way I do this is, again, pretty simple and pretty straightforward. I'll play in a position, meaning first finger is on the first fret, so I'm in first position or what we call open position. First finger always plays the first fret, second finger would play the second fret, third finger would play the third fret, fourth finger would play the fourth fret. I'm ignoring the open strings for the purpose of this exercise. I'm just playing the fretted notes. So I'm gonna go from low to high, starting in the low E string, and I'm gonna play them this way. First fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, and then all the way up. But notice how I'm playing very short and staccato, and almost, almost even a little bit splatty. The purpose of this is to get used to pushing down only as hard as you need to, and then relaxing immediately after you play that note. So I'm doing rest strokes with the picking hand, because that's where, why we always start with the picking hand, because that's what drives the whole thing, right? So I'm still doing rest strokes with the picking hand. I'm playing quarter notes. Um, but I'm relaxing that fretting hand immediately after I play each note. So notice my elbow is out. I'm not doing this. I'm not bending the wrist in any way. Elbow is out like you're waltzing. So you can reach all these notes with a hand straight on. Also, my wrist is straight. I'm not poking down like that or poking up like this. And that's accomplished through a high arch of the fingers. So my fingers are at a nice high arch here. My thumb, it, it tends to want to creep back here, but you should keep your thumb right behind your second finger because that's actually where your leverage is. If your thumb is off there, you're not pushing against anything. Okay, so your thumb is right there. And also the thumb is just a placeholder. You're getting a little bit of leverage off of it, but the leverage you're getting to fret the strings is actually coming from this uh, picking arm, which is stabilizing the instrument. I can play these notes without the thumb. I can even bar without the thumb because this is what's getting your leverage. But the thumb is your placeholder and it gives you that little touch of leverage. So this exercise is meant to get you playing really effortlessly. We'll do this together in a moment. I'm just kind of showing you. Keeping those fingers at a nice high arch, we're going to go a lot slower too. By the time you get to that high E, we're on a very high arch. See how my fingers are? They're all the way up like so. You don't want this flat fingering business. You don't get any leverage that way. All your leverage is from this angle. My thumb remains in that same place. And as I work my way down these strings, my fingers are just reaching a little bit further down but still at a nice high arch. And by the time you get down here, your palm very well may be touching the bottom of the neck, and that's totally fine. My hands are pretty big, my fingers are pretty long, so I don't always, you know, I might touch it by the time I get to the low E string. Many players will be touching the bottom of the neck by the time they get even to the G. But once you're up here, you're a little bit away from the neck. Okay, so now we're gonna do this together in time, and it's just gonna sound like this. Sorry, no open strings, just first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth, first, second, third, fourth, but really slow with this metronome, and in time. And when we get to the high E string, uh, we're gonna turn right back around. So we'll go, when we get to this high note, four, we go right back down, three, two, we just turn turn around and only play that high note once. And remember, no open strings, just the first, second, third, and fourth frets with their respective fingers. Remember to breathe and watch your fingers and make sure you're doing these things properly. Here we go. One, two, ready, go.
Don't rush. Stay right with the click. Okay, so again, if you do that properly and you're really uh, using precise timing of the effort to play each note, you're going to feel that nice, warm, flowy, warmed up kind of feeling. And your fingers will be nice and calibrated. You'll have the calluses on the same spots all the time. And you'll be ready to go for any note that you're playing. And you'll be able to reinforce that feeling of a light touch. I will always do this if I have the time and especially before I start grabbing C chords or F chords, because now I'm gonna grip them a lot lighter and still get an excellent tone. Okay, I'm gonna sip a tea here. And then we're gonna move on to the final part of the calibration exercises. You can think of them as warm-ups, you can think of them as technique exercises. I call it calibration because you're working on so many things at once if you're really paying close attention. Um, and you can gain so much from this doing these very basic things. The reason I can play the way I do is because I do these exercises. And uh, you're working on your tone. You're working on your timing. You're working on the efficiency of your technique. You're working on precision of both hands. And you're playing all the notes that you're going to be playing in sequence once we get to some flat picking style music. So this is just a moment to kind of set aside everything you do physically on the instrument and reinforce all those good habits and get warmed up at the same time. So this whole thing, the picking hand and fretting hand calibration, all culminates with a chromatic scale exercise. Now what I mean is now we're going to be playing every single note in open position which starts on the low E string open. And then you go first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, and then the next string open. A. And then first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, then on the D string, same thing, open. Same pattern, two, three, four, G string. This is the only one that's different because it goes open G, first, second, third fret. It doesn't go all the way up to the fourth fret because that's a B. And where's your B? Open. So the G string is the only one that goes up to the third fret. All the other words, including the B, go up to the fourth fret. E, up to the fourth fret, and then we just play that once and turn right back around and do the whole thing in sequence. nice and slow and you're alternating your strokes as you do this. So I'll demonstrate with the click here. It will be 16th note. So this will be red D and a go E and a one. So let's start a little bit slower. Now once you get this exercise down um, and it'll come It'll, it'll become second nature to you with a little bit of practice. And many of you might have already done this. If, if you have, I hope you're gaining some other things out of this. Um, but this will become second nature. And ultimately, you want to be able to do this like sort of at the tempo of the tunes you're playing. Because it's the exact same physical technique. And you're going to be able to play those tunes a lot cleaner if you can play this chromatic scale. So now we're going much slower, one E and a two E and a ready and a go and Whether or not you played that with me, I'll, I'll say a few more things about it. Now you see how it's done, and again, it takes a moment to get this automatic. It might take you several days, it might take you several weeks, but once you got it, you'll be able to just flow and work, work your way up the tempos. So a couple of the finer points here. Uh, we're alternating the strokes, strictly alternating. So down, up, down, up, down, up. That's the 
That's right, it's an upstroke on the open A. Steady down up the whole way. And sometimes I'll do this with my head or with my foot to make sure I'm keeping those strokes consistent. You won't have to do that for long, but it's a good way to get started. Because you want the pick strokes to go with the beat. You want them to be with the rhythm, indiscriminate of which direction you're going across the string. Okay? Um, so, the other thing is you're keeping your fingers as low to the fretboard as possible. You're not letting them fly off too far. And again, it's like you might be doing that a little bit now, but just try, you know, every day to just, to just keep it a little bit closer, a little bit reined in. And this is why you got to watch your fingers closely. There's no way you could possibly be bored doing these exercises because you're paying such close attention to what you're doing. Keeping those fingers nice and low to the fretboard, keeping them right on the fingertip, adjusting the elbow if you need to. I was getting lazy and doing that. Okay, make sure the elbow's out. You're getting a nice tone and you're playing as legato as possible. Where the previous exercise was staccato, this is a legato flowing from one note to the next, every note ringing as long as possible, and trying to make it sound musical. Okay, so here we go with the click, we'll play that entire chromatic scale. We'll do this a couple times, and uh, you can always mark this point in the video and come back to it if you need to brush up on it at another time. Here we go. A one E and a two E and a ready and a go E and Remember to breathe as you're doing that. When you breathe and have an active breathing practice, just, just breathing, just in and out, you know, uh, nothing fancy about it. But if you do that while you're doing these exercises, that starts to become automatic and you'll breathe more when you're playing because you need to breathe when you're playing to stay relaxed and not tense up. Here we go. One more time. Chromatic scale all the way up and all the way down. One E and a two E and a ready and a go and. turn the tempo up a little bit and if you're ready go ahead and play along um, and I'm just gonna work this up to some faster tempos um, just so you can hear it a little bit more in a musical context so here we go at that was 40 now we're at 56 beats per minute one e and a two e and a ready and a go and you can actually start to bounce the rhythm if you want to. What are we doing when we're flat picking? We're doing... We're playing with that bouncy... Bouncy kind of swing feel. So we can do that here too. So now let's go ahead and try that. Let's do that whole chromatic exercise with a bouncy rhythm. A one E and a two E and a ready and a go and. Okay. I'll just do one more tempo or maybe a couple more. I'm just going to blast up to like 75. This is what it sounds like at 75. 
and you're gonna start lightening up your touch and just relaxing more as you get to these faster tempos. And I'll do a little bouncy shuffle on this too. A one and a two and a ready and a go and. sound like at 85. Here we go. One and a two and ready and a go and. And when I'm doing these, like you get to a point where you don't have to go that slow if you trust your calibration. So I'm usually around 100 when I'm doing this. So if you can do that, you can go. So this is uh, basic warm-ups and calibrations, but it's meant to get you on to the next level in your playing. Okay, so we're going to move on here after I see if there's any questions coming in on Facebook land. Denise asks, does your pinky on the picking hand rest on the guitar? That's a very good question. Yes, my pinky is actually sort of grounding on the pit guard. Um, so that is another sort of finer point about your picking hand, your picking mechanism. I'm always grounded somewhere. So my pinky will just sort of drag on the pit guard. I try not to make too much noise there. I try not to tap it too much either. Um, but the idea is that that just travels with your picking mechanism act as sort of a guide and, and keep you grounded. If that's not there, um, I would suggest brushing your palm against the bridge pins. And that's something I actually do when things get going really fast. If it gets to a really fast tempo, I have to lift up that pinky and from then on I'm using the bridge pins as my grounding. You'll see a lot of players like David Greer basically plays this way, uh, Cody Kilby, some other great guitar players play without a pinky or another finger down and and they just kind of gently brush against the bridge pins to find their sense of grounding. Some players play completely free. That's tricky. I can't do that. Uh, the one thing I would guide you against is, is, is planting. Don't plant because that just limits your movement. You can get away with that on mandolin or banjo because the strings are spaced so much closer together. If you're planting on the guitar, it's going to be really hard to reach down for the E string, you know. So I like to let that pinky just drag. So that's a very good question. Okay. Um, I'm not seeing any comments on the YouTube stream. So the chat is disabled. Okay, Wolfgang, you might want to switch that as well. Enable that chat so folks can chime in on the YouTube channel. Um... I'll double check and make sure I'm worth looking at the proper video. Um, but uh, anyway, just a quick reminder, this is, this is a total experiment here by the Anchorage Folk Festival to be able to host uh, workshops throughout... Okay, here we go. There's, there's a chat. Okay. Very cool. Um, all right, so you're welcome to chime in on the YouTube channel as well. We're multi-streaming uh, to different platforms here, Facebook and YouTube, all through the Anchorage Folk Festival. Um, and a reminder that the actual physical festival is May 14th um, at, I had this down a moment ago, let me find that again. The actual event is May 14th at Cuddy Park, the 33rd annual Anchorage Folk Festival. And they're going to be kind of evolving into this system of doing things all year round, hosting concerts in and around Anchorage and online events like this one. 
and uh, this is a nonprofit and needs your member support. So if you are a real supporter of the Anchorage Folk Festival, check out that website. Make sure you're on as a supporter. Okay, so I'll check in again here shortly and see if there's any, any more questions. Thank you, Elaine, for tuning in and watching us. Okay. So now we're going to move on to an exercise with a C major scale. So we've worked through the technique stuff. That is just what you're going to build your technique upon, a strong foundation. You don't want any cracks in that cement. So now we're going to get into music. And music is broken down into different levels of organization. And the way most of these melodies that we play are organized are into the major scale and the minor scale. Mostly the major scale. I like to spend a lot of time focusing on the major scale because once you understand that really well, the, the rest of it just becomes very clear. So we're going to practice a C major scale. And it's going to go like this. You play a C note, which is the third fret of the A string. And we're still in position, just like we were on our calibration exercise. So third finger is on the third fret of the A string, and that makes a C. The next note is an open D. The next note is an E, second fret of that D string. The next note is F, third fret. The next note is the open G. The next note is A, second fret. Open B. C first fret. So there's one octave of the C major scale. Let's do that one more time, starting on the low C note, third fret of the A string. There you go. Open D, second fret E, third fret F, open G, second fret A, open B, first fret C. Okay, now, what did you just play? You played Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Ti, Do. You played the major scale. And I'll bet some of you are like, I know C major. But can you play da, 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 exactly like that? You want to be able to hear what you're playing and play what you're hearing. So this is where that all begins in my technique. I like to practice major scales really slowly and understand and memorize the sound of every one of those notes because then you can flow and play music without thinking about it. You can actually follow your ear, you can pick out melodies really quick, pick out licks really quick, and it all comes down to this basic exercise and you can build upon this as far as you want to. So now when we play that major scale, I want you to say the note names. So here we go. C. D. E. F. G. A. B. C. Now let's descend. Okay, starting on this high C, descending. C down to B, down to A, G, F, E, D, C. Great. Okay, so now we're going to get to the thing that's really valuable. I don't think about these note names when I'm playing. I know them. I've memorized them. I practice my notes. I learned my notes, of course. Uh, but I like to learn the sounds. So this is what we're going to do now. We're going to associate scale degrees with these notes in the scale. So C is going to be 1, and it sounds like that. D is 2, and it sounds like that. E is 3. F is 4. G is 5. A is 6. B is 7. And C is 1. You could call it eight, but it's really one, again, an octave higher. Uh, okay, and then when you descend, it's one, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. 
okay? So we're gonna play this really slow and sing those notes and, and, and sing those scale degrees so you memorize that that C, that's the one, that's what it sounds like, that's where it feels like, that's D, that's the two, that's what it sounds like, etc. You want to go slow enough that you memorize these and know exactly what you're gonna play and your fingers are gonna to go to that fret and not play the wrong note on accident. You wanna train yourself very strictly to play what you mean to play. So that's why we go really, really slow. So we're gonna go real slow, one note at a time, starting on C, here we go, and sing the scale degree. One, and then D is two, okay, keep going, three, descend and starting on this high one and we'll descend one seven six etc one seven six five four three two one very good let's drum a C chord Hear the sound of that tonality, okay? So the idea is that you want to memorize these notes to the point where if you hear a melody like da 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 that you'll know where those notes are. And if you hear a lick that goes ba ba da 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 ba da 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 you'll know where all those notes are automatically. And you can generate ideas and you can hear ideas and repeat them. And that's how we flow as guitarists in any style. This is something you should be doing whether you're a bluegrass flat picker or a jazz player or a blues player. Um, and we'll talk about blues and like altered notes in a minute, but let's just focus on getting these notes memorized. And again, you might be rolling your eyes at me saying, I know the C major scale, I can play melodies but can you do them just like that, hearing them the first time? Okay, until you can do that, uh, we're gonna practice this together. So one more time, let's go one, two, on up the scale, and then on back down the scale, just that one octave for now. And a little advanced trick is to kind of sing ahead of it, like here's one, and then where's two, two, and then play it, then sing three, play it and then sing four and then play it. If you're singing ahead or thinking ahead of where your fingers are, they'll start to automatically go to those intervals that you're trying to play. Okay? Simple stuff, right? But this is how uh, advanced players understand it. Okay, here we go, really slow. One, two, three, reflect and then we'll descend from one one descending seven six five four three two one great okay so now you're asking me, well, what do I do with all the other notes in open position? Because that's just one octave of C and you're very limited there. Well, to me, it repeats all the way up, all the way down. And uh, here's how you practice it in context of the entire position. Start by strumming a C chord and think about this sound. Mm, sing the root note C. Then think about the triad. One, three, five, three, one. Those are just the notes of the chord in order. One, three, five, three, one. Do that. One, three, five, three, one. Now 
now go one three five one five three one one three five one five three one now do this that's just those notes the beginning of the star star spangled anthem anyway lots of melodies uh, are based on this very simple stuff so you think about that C, you get that tonality really in your head. Think about the tonal center, C, the root note. And now we play the lowest note we can possibly play in this position, which is a low E. Now what is that in the key of C? It's the third, right? We did one, two, three. Well, here's the three down there. So we're going to play that low E, and you don't have to sing the same octave. You can sing three just like you did up there and sing an octave higher or wherever your vocal range is so i'm going to play that low e and i'm going to sing three and then i'm going to think four and realize it's my first finger on the first fret f is four just like it was up there g is five open a is six now i can sing it in its proper octave b is seven C. So now I've learned those notes below the root, below that octave of C, but they're the exact same notes. Three, four, five, six, seven, one. Three, four, five, six, seven, one. So you are learning them the same way as you learned the notes up here. So if you hear a little lick that goes da 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 da. You'll know all the places I'm trying to show off. Uh, you'll know all the places it is. Okay, and if you're not showing off, you will play them properly if you're focused on the notes themselves. So now we're going to play the chord and sing the tonic note. Mm -hmm. There's your tonic note. And then we'll think about the three. Three. And then four, and then five, six, seven, one. And now you're on one, and you'll continue playing that note again before you ascend. One, and we're continuing. Two, three. ascend to these higher notes okay so you got the one one and then two is this D right here two I'm gonna switch sing into a lower octave again three you get better at this too as you go four five turn right back around four three stopping when you get to the root note. So when you get to these high notes, you're going one, two, slower than this, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. You're on the one. Now you just rest and relax, reflect. Then you start your uh, descent from there. One, seven, it doesn't matter what octave you're in, just match the pitch. Six, again one descending to the seven to the six five four three what now right back up four five six seven one then you finished so we'll do this in context here in just a moment but that is how you learn a scale in a position you start with the chord associated with it, and then you play the lowest possible note of that position and sing those scale degrees as you work your way up. And in bluegrass flat picking, we're pretty much concerned about open position. We got most of the notes right there. Uh, up the next stuff, that's, that's for another time. And you'll learn up the next stuff uh, by learning the scale positions, but also by learning some of the vocabulary. <laughs> 
some of that stuff is just built in to some of the licks and vocabulary and also some of the tunes, right? Um, but you know, I've done all my scale studies up and down the neck and there's nothing wrong with, with, with doing that. But this is where it begins for the flat pickers. So again, just to review, we're gonna strum the chord. Think about that root note, and then we're going to start on the lowest note we can play, which is not the root, it's the third, three, three, and then we'll sing the scale degrees, stopping on the root, and then starting on the root, working our way all the way up and all the way back down, that way, and when we get to the bottom again, we work our way back up to the root. So you're, you're starting on the lowest note, but you're always ending on the root note, okay? So here you go, strum your C chord. Think about the C, sing that note one. Now play and sing one, three, five, three, one. Here you go. One, three, five, three, one. Now think of the third, the three, and play the low E, three. And here we go, up the scale. Four, five, six, seven, one, very good. And then play that note again before you move on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one. Now we'll move on from there, still ascending. One. Descend from there. One, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And now they're covering the low notes again. One, seven, six, five. Do that every day, a couple times, until you get it right, uh, and spend a lot of time on this, like weeks, like do that daily, until you can start picking out melodies by ear. And that's a whole nother study, that's a whole nother sort of course um, to dig into. Um, but most of the melodies start on either the root third or fifth of whatever chord the song is starting on. So, you know, figure out melodies like Amazing Grace. It's a five, one, three, three, two, one, six, five, five, one, three, three, two, five, etc. Um, but today, since we have about 30 minutes left, I'm going to go ahead and just get to one particular song that we're going to work out for the rest of this session. And it's called Little Annie. So, I'm going to sing the song and I want you to just try to pick up the melody, okay? And then we're going to figure out the melody by ear. So it goes like this. Once more, little Annie, I must leave you. We shall part at the end of the lane but promise me little Annie you'll be waiting when the springtime comes again okay so one more time I'll sing it for you once more little Annie I must leave you we shall part at the end of the lane but promise me, little Annie, you'll be waiting when the springtime comes again. Okay? So now, uh, say you're at a concert and you hear that song. You're like, cool, I'm going to memorize this melody. Da 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 da
da da da da da da da da da da da da da da da da Basically, that's kind of an abridged version of it. And if you heard that song, it, you know, you might not memorize it right there when you're hearing it at the concert, but say you have a, 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 a recording of that song and you listen to it a few times, start singing along, and then you got the melody down. So then what? You go to your guitar and you strum a C chord and you sing. Da 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 da. Okay. Now you're in there, and this sounds like the chord associated with the song. No matter what key you're in, you can play a chord and find that melody. Say I'm in a different key. Da 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 da. That's a totally different key, but it's the same melody because it's always that same set of scale degrees, no matter what key you're in. So that's why the numbers are so important. Da da da. What is that? Three, two, one. Right? Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one. That's how I learned the melody. One, six, five, five, three, four, three, two. Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one. One, six, five, three, four, three, two, one. Okay? So, uh, I'm deliberately not giving you the notation for this song because this is how we learn things by ear, and this is how you apply that scale study to be able to learn any song. Okay, so um, so I'll break this down again for you, and we'll play it together. So it starts on three, two, one of that C scale. So play that three, two, one, right? And then uh, two, three, and then five, and then six, one. Okay. So that's the beginning of the melody. Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one. And try to do this without hunting and pecking. Now granted, I just gave you that scale exercise. If I said, okay, practice that for two weeks and then I'm with you now, I would say, okay, you got those scale degrees memorized, right? So play exactly what you're trying to play the first time. You might not be there yet on your scale study, I understand. But if you come back to this in two weeks after practicing that scale study, you'll hear that melody and you won't need any of this prompt. You'll just know where those notes are. So I'll, show, I'll prompt them again. Uh, three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one. Okay, here we go. Play it really slow. One, two, Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one. Okay, one more time, same thing. One, two, three. Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one. Okay. The next part goes one, six, five, five, three, four, three, two. That two is a very important note of the scale. Whenever we're halfway through the melody and the chord change is on a five chord, 90% of the time the melody note is the two. Um, okay, so again, one, six, five, five. Three, four, three, two, try that. Ready, go. One, six, five, five, three, four, three, two. One more time. Ready, go. One, six, five, five, three, four, three, two. So now 
we're halfway through that melody. Um, and let's put those two pieces together. It'll go three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one, one, six, five, five, three, four, three, two. Okay? Let's give it a try, really slow. One, two, three. Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one, one, six, five, five, three, four, three, two. Okay, one more time. This is 90% of the notes. There's only one slightly different. Uh, slight difference in the end the second time around. So here's the first half, which is most of the material. Let's play it again. One, two, three. Three, two, one. second half of the melody starts exactly the same. Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one. Okay, and now here's the slight difference. One, six, five, three, four, three, two, one. Okay, again. One, six, So, um, it's a, this is a type of melody which is called a period. It means it'll have a, a first half and a second half that are the same except for the end, a couple notes. And uh, it happens to work with the chord changes the same way, very much like Beethoven's Ode to Joy. Most of the bluegrass songs are exactly this, this type of melody. So here we go. We're going to play the entire thing, and it sounds like this. Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one, one, six, five, five, three, four, three, two, three, two, one, two, three. One more time, we'll play the same thing together. Nice and slow, here we go. A one, two, three. Three, two, one, two, three, five, six, one. One, six, five, five, three, four, three. So now, I will keep prompting you, but I'm going to play the chord changes. And you're going to play that melody, just like so, and I will sing it and help you along. So don't worry about the chord changes yet, um, just play that melody, and I'll sing it along with you. Here we go. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Three, two, one, two, three, 
Let's try it one more time. This is basically how you could kick off the song. You could just play that simple melody and there's your kickoff right there. We'll explore a couple ways to dress that up as we move forward here. So just play the basic melody one more time. I'll play the changes. One, two, three. Three, two, one. got the melody. If you don't have the melody, just again mark this point in time on a piece of paper and come on back to this video uh, at another time to brush up on it. Now let's learn the chord changes. We got a C major with a boom strum rhythm. Okay, so again the boom strum, if you don't know it, we're basically playing the bass note, C, strumming, and then the fifth. This is the first thing most people learn when they're learning bluegrass guitar. So there it is on the C chord. On the F chord, it's like so. Alright, C. You can always play it twice in a row, that's fine. Just root, root, and then G7. Alternating bass notes are the low G, strum, open D, strum, right, G7. Okay, so let's play through the rhythm as best you can with those boom strums. And um, again, I have tons of resources online. If you want to send me a message and or relay it through uh, the Anchorage Folk Festival, and they can relay it to me. And I will... Uh, after this is done, I'll post on the comments a couple of links to these things. But I do a bunch of work for jamplay.com, and I've got instructional material on this subject as far as you want to take it, starting at the very beginning. So there's a bunch of rhythm stuff you can learn uh, checking out my courses there. So here we go. Let's just strum a basic rhythm through this song, and here's how it goes. A one, two, three. Three, a C chord. One, two, three, four, F. One, two, three, four, C. One, two, three, four, G7. One, two, three, four, C. One, two, three, four, F. One, two, three, four, C. Now what most uh, bluegrass players are going to yell are the numbers rather than the chord names. Why? Well, because certain instruments might be capoed in different places and you might be not necessarily playing out of C position. You might be capoed 5 playing out of G position, so you're thinking G, but you still know it's 1 in that key. So we use the numbers. 1, 4. So that is the verse of the song, and that's what we generally play our, our lead parts over. Our kickoff, our guitar breaks, etc. will all happen over that part of the song. Now the song does have a chorus, and it goes to the V chord. So we get to the chorus, we'll go to the G, 
either G or G7. Here we go. Five. Back to one. And then it's a long one chord. So I'll take you through the top of the song and I'm going to sing the melody, but I'm going to be shouting the chord changes. So let's play the rhythm, okay? Together, here's your C chord. One, a two, a ready, and a go. And a one, and one to the four. And a one, and a one, and a five. And a So in a moment, I'm just throwing you right into this song because that's the way bluegrass works. We're often at a jam where we don't know the song, and uh, but we know the patterns of the way these songs work, and we figure out the chord changes pretty quick, or there's a jam leader like me just telling you the chords as we go, or holding up a number, right? Um, but uh, let's go ahead and work our way toward actually playing this song together. So you got the basic melody. You can play that as the kickoff, okay? And um, there's lots of other things you can do with that. And again, I'm trying to give you something that all levels can glean something from. Um, but there's next steps you can take, like working up a melody strum. <laughs> example of like a melody strum type of arrangement. Once you get into cross picking, you can do stuff like that. cross-picking pattern. You can put your own thing together. Like I, the way I kick this song off, just from playing it so much, has evolved into this. Let's see, one, two, three. got a few little decorations along the way. Okay, so right now what we're going to do is you're going to kick off the song and uh, I'll count you in and I'll play rhythm. So you kick it off just by playing any version of that melody that you'd like and then uh, and then start strumming with me and we'll sing the song. We'll sing a verse and a chorus and then I'm going to go ahead and play a version of the melody while you're playing the chords and backing me up. And we'll go back and forth, okay? So here you go. Get ready to kick us off with a basic melody on Little Annie. And right after that, 
I'll start singing the song and you just follow me. And uh, like I said, first break is going to be me. So you play the rhythm and I'll play a version of the melody. Then we'll sing another verse in the chorus and I'll cue you to play another break, which could be improvised or just kind of going back to that melody. So here we go. Kick us off on the melody of Little Annie. A one, two, one, two, go.
slow tempo version of it, of course. I'm, I'm letting everyone uh, play along at a basic level. If I'm performing the song, I'm going to be somewhere like this. About that tempo, or even a little bit quicker, depending on how warmed up I'm feeling and how excited I am. So there you go. That's a breakdown of sort of my process. And along the way, there's lots of little techniques to check out, including the cross picking, the melody strum. And again, I have extensive lessons on those subjects on at jamplay.com. And then you got to learn all those tunes, right? Learn the fiddle tunes, the instrumentals. And then you learn all the song melodies. Uh, and then you start applying this to other keys, to the key of G, key of D. Beyond that, you got your capo to move you around. So you don't need much else other than C, G, and D. Those are your most common keys in flat picking. You can go to the key of open A, that's really fun. Open E, that's really fun. But for me, the understanding of it all boils down to understanding the C major scale. So, understanding that as the template for which everything else is built on, you're going to ultimately see the big picture when you're learning some Tony Rice break or something from David Greer, Russ Berenberg, Molly Tuttle, Billy, you know, Billy Strings, whoever, uh, Doc Watson. You're going to ultimately realize how all that boils down to this basic stuff and how understanding this basic stuff helps you to understand what they're playing and where you can take this your own self. So there's no substitute for actually like learning the licks, you know, um, doing some transcribing, taking a course, whatever it may be. But anyone who I've ever worked with, I start them with this and make sure they understand it and then we'll build from there. So, and I do have the Monday Night Play Along Jams on Archive. I'm taking a break right now because things are getting really, really busy. I can't do regular Monday nights right now. But there is a link to a YouTube playlist that I will post on the video as well that you can go to any of the archived uh, Play Along Jams, slow tempo, mid-tempo, fast tempo, and uh, jam along at any time that you would like. So again, big thanks to the Anchorage Folk Festival Remember, the festival is going to be May 14th at Cuddy Park in Anchorage. And uh, stay tuned to anchoragefolkfestival.org for more announcements and more events that are going to be happening year-round, including virtual events like this one. So again, thank you so much to the festival. Thank you all for watching, and I hope you've gained something from this. If you got friends... Who missed it, uh, you can send them the link to that video and they can go through this, this little uh, intensive 90-minute workshop on their own. Okay, thank you so much everybody. Well, I'm Tyler Grant and I will see you down the road.